Colossal Cave. country throughout most of North America is the elusive bobcat. This female was native to the Sonoran Desert of southern Arizona. Soon to be a mother again, she was looking for a place to have her young, which wasn't easy to find. For wherever she went, it seemed that just over the next hill, man would show up. It so happened that this man was also a native to this part of the country. And he, too, was looking for a place to call home. Paco Patia was taking a last look at his old village where he'd just been visiting. Paco had been in the service and had done a lot of traveling. He now realized that he just didn't belong here anymore. It was sad, but true. Both he and the bobcat seemed out of place in their old home territory. Home's not home. In her 
search for a den to house her coming family, the bobcat investigated every conceivable possibility. In spite of some unusual signs, the expectant bobcat seemed to feel that this dense thicket just might be the place. A closer check at the thick desert growth revealed that it could very well serve as a nice nursery. Of course, the bobcat had no way of knowing that those signs marked the trail for a cross-country motorcycle race. With human beings most everywhere, Finding a new den in her old territory wasn't going to be easy. She would just have to keep moving on. Discouraged in house hunting, the bobcat turned to squirrel hunting. Bobcat had lost a lunch, but perhaps she'd found a home after all. The place was dry, secluded, and had lots of room. An ideal maternity den. She didn't know how far back it went into the mountain, but she'd only be using the front room anyway. The den entrance was well hidden, which was very important to her. Even though there was a road fairly close by, the traffic didn't seem too heavy. The bobcat decided to move in, unaware that the back part of her den led to the front door of Colossal Cave, the popular Arizona landmark where Paco had come to apply for a job. From the cave headquarters, daily tours were conducted on about a mile of lighted pathways inside the cavern. Having done everything from crewing on a shrimp boat off Baja to playing in a Nogales mariachi band, Paco was sure he could make it as a caveman. And so the two displaced natives arrived at Colossal Cave, one at the front door, one at the back. It had been none too soon for Mama Bob. Right after her arrival, they arrived. In their part of Colossal Cave, Mama Bob rested, and her week old cubs learned about being alive. In the main part of Colossal Cave, Paco was still learning how to find his way around in his new job. He was highly intrigued by his surroundings. He'd been hired as a maintenance man which mostly meant that he cleaned up the place. But he did have a chance to become a guide if he could memorize some facts and legends that his boss, Joe Myers, had prepared for the tours. He had given his permission for Paco to practice while he worked. Colossal Cave is formed of Escabrosa limestone, some 300 million years old. The mountains in this area were the result of an upheaval of the Earth's crust approximately 40 million years ago. Joe was pleased to see that Parker was serious about becoming a guide. It is now a completely dry cave. The beautiful crystal formations were formed over a period of tens of thousands of years. Mama 
Bob found that her part of Colossal Cave made an ideal nursery. The cubs slept most of the time, especially when their tummies were filled with their mother's milk. When her small ones drifted off, the mother bobcat had a chance to take care of her own needs. There was a convenient spring nearby, which also meant there was small game in the area. soon became aware that the bobcat had moved in. To survive, they either moved out or learned to avoid her. Mama Bob had to travel farther and farther away to find food. One of the man-made features of Colossal Cave that really interested Paco was a series of dioramas depicting the events of a train robbery that had involved the old cavern. He was trying to write a ballad about the legend, which might help get him a job as a guide. A song for the tours was a unique idea, but right now, Paco had to vacuum the walkways. For over a month, Mama Bob had found no reason to explore the back rooms of her family's den until this very moment. cave has been used by animals and men down through the centuries. Ancient Indians lived here. Travelers in the Old West would use the cave for shelter, and outlaws would hide out from the law in these passageways. In 18... Uh, in 1884, $62,000 in gold was stolen from Wells Fargo and hidden in these passageways. Quite a shock for the mother bobcat to find that man was so near to her family. Moving the little cubs would not be easy, but her instinct was to avoid people at all times. She had no way of knowing that humans would not be coming to her den, as it was quite far from the lighted portions of the cave, or that her entry was a secret one, not used by man. However, once they were outside, Mama Bob discovered an even greater danger. Male bobcats often kill young cubs out of pure jealousy. The mother bobcat prepared to face the oncoming danger alone. male was coming ever closer to the den. Mama Bob knew that the best way to protect her family was to decoy him away. Set. 
The eager male was obviously interested. The female was now ready to make her move. It was not exactly what he expected. The male bobcat headed for safer territory, and the female wanted to make sure that he found it. Since the male could come back, Mama Bob would keep her cubs in the cave, which seemed to be the safest place after all. As the days passed, Taco began to feel quite at home underground. Joe Myers had given employees permission to use parts of the cave as their own private hideaways. Taco had chosen a storeroom for his and had brought down a cot, some food, and among other things, his guitar. He had absolute privacy during breaks and leisure hours to relax, enjoy a snack, and to pursue his newfound hobby, which was thoroughly studying everything he could about caves and caving. Keeping her busy at both ends, the growing cubs didn't give Mama Bob much time for leisure. she had taught them to stay in the cave whenever she left to hunt game, which was getting harder and harder for her to find. Though it was understood that they were to stay in the cave, which cave had never been spelled out by their mother. The Bob Kittens discovered a whole new world as they approached the tourist areas of Colossal Cave. in the labyrinth of passageways. Part of Paco's work was to replace burnt out light bulbs. The odd shapes you are now seeing were carved out of solid limestone by seeping water over a period of many centuries. Paco had turned the light off to hide the kittens. He wasn't sure what the official policy was about wild animals being in the cave. He just enjoyed having them around. The mother bobcat had discovered a potentially dangerous hunting ground in her ever-widening search for food. Because man was nearby, she would hunt here 
only if she had to. As time passed, the cubs took advantage of their mother's absence on long hunting trips to make regular visits to their amigo Paco, who always managed to have a treat ready for them. That dangerous hunting ground had finally become a last resort for the hungry bobcat, unable to find food for her family elsewhere. And so the rumor started that there was a thieving outlaw cat somewhere in the neighborhood. The Bob Kittens continued to enjoy Paco's hospitality, even when he wasn't there. As for wild animals being in the cave, Joe Myers was all for it. After all, they'd been there a long time before man. Joe had been looking for Paco to tell him about a change in the work schedule. He didn't know he'd be getting a sneak preview of Paco's completed song. Well, neither did Paco. Let me tell you a tale of colossal cave When a band of four outlaws nearly made it their grave Well, they robbed the SP of a shipment of gold Had along their trail long before it got cold Long before it got cold Then those outlaws rode hard Till their horses quit So they hid in this cavern Deep as hombres could get There were sixty-two grand In the gold they had stole When the posse saw them Sneaking into this hole Sneaking into this hole For a week they stood guard Till the man from town Told about the four hombres Who were bragging around They said the sheriff was dumb Far beyond any doubt Cause the cave that he watched Had another way out it had another way out So the sheriff rode back Got to town at noon And discovered those outlaws In a corner saloon Well, he was quick on the draw Shooting three of them dead but the fourth one gave in Hands up over his head Hands up over his head Well, he served 18 years For his evil crime But the day he got out He was well paid for his time well, he recovered the gold and he covered his tracks. All they found in the cave were the old money sacks. Just the old money sacks. That's the story they told back in 84. And the moral is part of old colossal cave lore. Put your gold in a place where it's safe to store And make sure that your hideout has a secret back door Has a secret back door Has a secret back door Paco didn't know it, 
that he had just convinced Joe Myers that he would make an excellent guide. Which is exactly what Paco became. And this is the famous sinkhole of Colossal Cave. A seemingly bottomless pit. Objects tossed into it never seem to reach the bottom. And if you should fall in, don't forget to tell us it's down there. But don't worry, we haven't lost the visitor yet. This way, please. Any place with hunting dogs was no place for a bobcat. Curly Baines could sell that bobcat's pelt. And being a professional hunter, he could also collect a bounty from local ranchers. Go get him. been able to shake her pursuers. Doubling back on her own tracks, she tried to leave a confusing trail. given up. Until they had, she could not return to her cubs. It was that evening when Paco decided to explore a part of the cave. In leaving a note detailing his plans, he was taking an important caving precaution. However, in going alone, he was breaking the cardinal rule for underground exploring. But Paco was a loner quite sure he could take care of himself. His equipment included a compass, a map of the cave system, and chalk to mark his return route. Modern cavers wore sturdy hard hats equipped with either carbide lamps or electric ones like Paco's, powered by a battery pack. He took along a good climbing rope and a flashlight, which, with the matches and candles in his pockets for emergencies, gave him the recommended three sources of light for cave exploration. Paco's note revealed the route he planned to take and the time he expected to return, just in case he had any problems and was missed. At first, though he was off the regular walkways, he was still in an area where the cave electrical system provided some light. This narrow natural ledge crossed over a dangerous abyss. Paco wanted to make sure that the coming back was as easy as the going in. The unusual colors were brought out by the cave's artificial lighting. O 
Over 39 miles of passageways have been mapped in Colossal Cave. Paco could head in most any direction and find something interesting. However, Paco hoped to follow the route taken by the outlaws back in 84. He had memorized every shaft and passageway on his map. Or at least, he thought he had. for the hunting party. Furley and a couple of friends waited around the campfire while his dogs were trying to bring the bobcat to bay. They could hear the hounds out in the desert and tell by their voices how the hunt was going. The mother bobcat could hear them too. She managed to stay just far enough ahead to avoid being treed or cornered. It would be a long, trying night for Mama Bob. It turned out to be the same kind of night for Paco. By the time he realized he had forgotten to make regular chalk marks for his return trip, it was too late. He had lost his perspective, his sense of direction, and eventually his way. Since her mother hadn't been able to return to the den, the bob kittens were hungry. They had come to Paco's hideaway for a midnight snack. It was most disappointing to find that their amigo hadn't anticipated their late visit. Paco's caving note intrigued one of the cubs. But he couldn't eat it, and he certainly couldn't read it. had frightened the cubs away from what would have been a fabulous feast. It also was a definite disaster for the note Paco had left in case he got lost, which, most unfortunately, he had. Migratory bats roosted deep in the cave, but these elusive creatures could fly in complete darkness, and Paco would never be able to follow them to safety. And so he continued to wander, knowing he might be just a few feet away from the lighted walkways. However, those few feet could contain a thousand tons of solid rock to block his way. Paco was trying to smile through a desperate situation. He was about to try a new direction when... Yeah. 
knew his location, he could take time to find out where the bobcat's den was located. It had been just before dawn that the dogs had forced her into the open. The hunters went out closing in for the kill. The bobcat was being herded directly toward Colossal Cave headquarters, but she had no choice. the outlaw cat. To calm down the modern-day equivalent of the 1884 posse, Joe's wife served coffee to Furley and the other hunters. They had been advised that all they had to do was wait. Furley had supposedly agreed to take the bobcat to a zoo once she had been driven out of the cave. Okay, fine. If your deputies in the area, give them a call and have them stop by. And thanks. Are you sure they'll take her to the zoo we can drive her on? No, not Furley. Not when he can sell her pelt. He'd like those kittens, too, if he'd get his hands on them. If you could get the mother and cubs up here, they'd all be safe. Swar National Monument, close to 100 square miles of protected wilderness. No hunting. Yeah, I can take them out through their den. I saw it last night. The opening ought to be about here. That means he exits very close to our parking lot. So? So that motorcycle of yours. You could take the back road. It's rough, but it'll get you to the back entrance of the park. Yeah. Come on, let's get you some gear. Paco felt he could carry the cubs on his bike, but he had no idea how he'd handle their aggravated mother, now searching for her den deep inside the cave. For the benefit of the hunting posse, Joe made quite a show of instructing Paco and the other guide on how to drive the outlaw bobcat to the surface. They all made it look quite convincing. Make yourselves comfortable, gentlemen. Those boys will get that bobcat out of there in no time at all. 
They better. We open to the public in about an hour. <laughs> here. Though the mother bobcat had found that her cubs were safe, she sensed that she still was being pursued. All right, this is it. We're right on. Almost. It was too late to move her family. Maybe she could decoy them in a way. Go to mama. a patrol car for official support. However, the rather unusual actions of Paco and the guide delayed the puzzled deputy. He was even more confused when the mother bobcat seemed to be following Paco. office and tell me about it. There was a couple of your guides, Joe, and one of them took off on a motorcycle with a bobcat following him. Took off for where? Beat me. He was headed for the old road. Let's get out of here.
needed. For once, the outlaws got away from the party. Sometimes you can't tell the good guys from the bad guys. That bike of yours get you back to the cave? Yeah, it always runs real good once it's heading for home. Vaya con Dios, amigos. There's a place. 